Hey everybody, welcome to this year's Summer Knowledge Grab Technology Showcase, where I walk through some of the cool services and tools out there in the Knowledge Graph space. I go through these with an honest review so that you can see what these are all about without necessarily having to go and talk to those salespeople unless you really want to. All right, so the lineup for this year is really exciting. This is the graph technology we're talking about today. And make sure you stick around for this month's showcase because there are a lot of other cool tools that we will be reviewing. So with that said, let's go get started. Hey, my name is Dermot Doyle. I'm the co-founder of uh, Denaccurate, which is a company which is focused on bringing uh, semantic interoperability to healthcare and health data. I'm Rafael. I am the AI lead uh, programmer for Dynacrate. I have a background in, in recommended systems, in machine learning, and also in linked data. So today we're going to show you a completely new product. It's been uh, worked on since uh, uh, late last year called Die Farm. And Die Farm is absolutely powerful uh, because it will give both technical and semantic interoperability uh, to drug data forever. It's going to be one of the few products which can take in legacy data without having to force a hospital or a health organization to change their underlying systems. Mm. All it requires is to take the uh, drug data which is already in those systems and then it will align it to one single index of identifiers. And once mm. you do that, um, what's really exciting about this is we're putting this product out at a very, very good price so that every single hospital can use it. They can mm -hmm. align to one particular index and then you have complete semantic interoperability literally at the level of the country. Uh, yeah. it's, it was built to do that for the UK market uh, based on one NHS regulation. And you're speaking my language. The interoperability of data is is song to my heart, I swear. The reality is you can you could just make your own index. You could let's say, okay, we're a group of hospitals and we have several applications in each site that has, you know, they all have uh, drug data. Well, we will just take them all in and we're going to do many to one matches. And then we will establish that as our index going forward. And then if we want to link that later on to something maybe in the US at state or federal level, we can do that. So the the really powerful thing about it is you can be aligning to one, let's say a national index or maybe a database, which is important in your own particular market. Mm -hmm. You could also be just cleaning up the data that you have mm -hmm. inside your own organization, mm -hmm. uh, be it uh, you know for research purposes, be it for uh, management of inventories and things of that nature. But the main thing is that you have, uh, as I said before, you have complete interoperability now mm -hmm. on your drug data. You you can actually look through even at, at any level of scale that you want, as long as the sites are using the technology, because mm -hmm. they can each push a master list up mm. to the next level. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. if you do that, I mean, we had discussions with the NHS where we were talking about, well, literally every hospital that has this can now report into you once a month with the uh, with the relevant uh, data. Yes. And they will have a one clean subset. Yeah. Or, or actually one clean master set of data, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all of those hospitals, which is being generated uh, automatically and being delivered on time in a completely clean way. And it's still linked to the legacy data. Well, so and it's great for auditing too, right? Like you're talking about regulations and things that are of, of a legal nature. Being able to really trust and understand where everything is, is incredibly important when you have to adhere to those things. Yeah, I mean, if you understand, for example, you can check this online, but there was a study in 2018 and it was quite a frightening read actually. Uh, because it referred, it, it, when we're looking at the, you know, the the issues of the misprescription and misuse mm -hmm. of the NHS, mm -hmm. and they estimated that about 100 million British pounds was being wasted every year in inappropriately oh, 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 oh. prescribed and inappropriately used medication. Yeah. But what was worse than that was they knew of about 700 deaths which had occurred from this. Wow. But they suspected over 20,000. Whoa, uh, and that's just in the UK. And this is obviously not yes. just a UK problem. So, you know, the audience yes. that's watching, think yes. about that for, for whatever region yes. you're in right now. Absolutely. And when you think about it, it's not a question of 
Well, why is that happening in the UK? The UK simply put some indicators and uh, they quantified the issue. Mm -hmm. The question is really, why will that not be happening mm -hmm. in our country, in our market? Because if we can't align our medication data exactly, you're yeah. contributing to that issue. Now, of yeah. course, it doesn't solve the entire problem. Someone might just prescribe something to you because they don't know any better and they give you yeah. what they think works. Yeah. But you're not going to be able to solve the problem if you have some confusion about what yeah. somebody's been given over the last 10 years or five years or three months. And what I love about this is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's no knowledge graph tech behind this. Is that accurate? Correct. Well, it, it was predicated on it. This is the reason we could build this so fast is we were quite familiar with the SNOMED ontology. Yep. Uh, but this is more of an advanced search tool yeah. which nests inside a yep. broader solution. So, so the reason I ask that is because I think there's actually probably a very good use case in taking what you're doing and pairing it up with a lot of the knowledge graph solutions that are now coming out to say, oh, you know, the drug you just uh, prescribed, it has a severe interaction with this other drug. Maybe yes, you shouldn't absolutely. do that. Definitely. Right? Absolutely. So absolutely. I think that there's a, a lovely pairing here for those yeah. out there that are working in this space. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that is what the future of healthcare data should look like. It should yeah. all be linked. And indeed, yeah. what we're going to see is we're going to see a collection of different technologies. You'll be using machine learning to identify concepts. Yeah. You'll be using other forms of AI to manage, let's say, the semantic layer. And then you're going to be using uh, uh, search technologies to match concepts as well. And in all of that, you, you have to really juggle your, let's say, your uh, your architecture of solutions, you know, to get the optimum outcome. But at the end of it, all of your health data should be linked. It yeah, should be interoperable. Of it needs to travel. It should follow yeah. you, yeah. you know. And one of the big problems in health data is when it gets old and those health ontologies, they update, your identify or say the concepts that you used to describe your condition some years ago may no longer be valid and you run into that problem. So yeah, the unless they're linked and then the updates then propagate to the older data because of the IDs, right? Exactly. Now I have loaded a subset with 25 drugs so we can do it quickly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the DM and the version, the oldest version that I have here, which probably would be, yes, this one, which is the oldest. So here I'll select it and I'll select the catalog and I'll start working with it. And what will you, what it will be doing is it will take each of those 25 drugs and try to match into a drug within the mm -hmm. DMD catalog. Mm -hmm. And let's see if it finished. Yes. So we have 22 mappings we mm -hmm. could, which we could do but three that we couldn't do at all. So this is mapping your catalog, your your individual records to the the master that is kind of on the global level. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. And also the DMND, as I said, the, it's a subset of SNOMED. So mm -hmm. it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a part of SNOMED that describes drugs. Yep. So yeah, it could match that. Let's take a look at the matches. Now here we have it on on DMD we have three uh, four sorry five five categories of drugs which is the VMP which is the description the virtual description of the drug we have the AMP which is the actual drug itself with uh, a distributor we also have the VTM which is the compound which is the upper level of the the hierarchy and also we would have the vmpp which is stands for packs and the aempp which stands for packs for amps as well so uh our tool focus on mapping the vmp and the amp and the vtm in case it can't find any vmp and then amp there and here you can see on the left side the dmd information and on the right side, the local catalog information. If you want to see more details of it, you can click here. Oh, that's nice. And let's say the second one, for example, we can see here that it matched on Colecal D3, but the, the dosage is not correct. You see 
400 here and 1000 here. So what you can do to fix this, you can click on edit and it will list here all of the suggestions ranked by similarity. And he and can you, browse. Where, where's the similarity score? Don't you show that? Oh, we are not showing, but we definitely can, all, can add it. Oh, later. good. That's good. OK. Uh, so it lists here all of the suggestions. And you can browse through here and select one to see their information here on the right side. And by the way, this is the information from the local catalog. OK. So. Uh, it seems that this one is the correct one. So I'll just try, type here, change, changed to the correct one and hit save. And there you go, it's fixed. So it's now rerouting the mapping to the correct one and you got yes. to add a note as to why that was incorrect, which I like because if you needed to go back and update the machine learning, um, you you can with some of those nodes, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely, Good. yeah. Cool. So yes, there you go. In case I don't want a mapping, also I can click here and delete the mapping, and and I can show you now that it sees the drugs, but the drug that I just deleted the mapping, but it doesn't find any match here, so it's not mapped. And once I'm done with everything, I can move back to overview and push to master what I just did. In this exercise, I didn't validate any one of them. And there's a reason why I didn't, because we have the possibility of somebody says, OK, I can validate all and push them back to the master catalog. And once it's done, we have a master vision here. And now is where everything gets more interesting. I'm going to do a new working version, but now I'm going to pick up the earliest one that I have, which is from last week. And now I'll, get, I, I'll grab this and I'll hit start working. And it will recover everything from the master version here back to the working version. And we'll run a difference between uh the dmd releases and the catalog releases oh this and is nice so then you don't have to do <laughs> then you can just do batch processing assessing instead of just reloading the entire data set which is such a pain so i'm glad to see like this shows like some of that nuance that you really understand the the workflow of your customers because i know this is always a problem for me and once it's done it flags mappings that have some degree of impact. So for instance, in this case, we have two new mappings and we have one mapping that needed to be changed, probably because a DMD drug was uh, retired or was deleted or something like that. So we can go back to the mapping management here and see that it flags for us what you have to see. Very cool. Yeah. And you can see here that it this one has changed so it has a flag of change. So probably this drug here, uh, the previous drug that we mapped was retired. So we have to find a substitute for it. And in this case, you can see here's the mapping that I deleted. And now it's flagged again as a new mapping because it found a mapping for the, the one that I just deleted. And this one didn't have a map on the previous version, but now it has. So it, it is also flagged as new. And if I'm fine, with all of those changes here, I can just select. Oh, you see all of those three now got yep. approved. I just selected them and it's now approved. And then, then you have different drug systems as well. So in a hospital, you'll have the uh, stock management, you'll have the formulary, uh, you may have a dispensing uh, system, you might have an electronic prescribing uh, system, which should be the, the end uh, area, which is getting this cleaned up data in order to give, let's say, a highly, you know, a, a highly confident uh, uh, name, or in this case, an exact naming convention uh, for the drugs that were held or, or uh, identified in every other system. We, we also hope, uh, you know, when this is um, in the market at scale, that people will volunteer, say, OK, well, I'm going to volunteer my matches 
to mm, the police, nice. for example, the NHS as an authority. Mm -hmm. And at that level of scale, you begin to say, OK, well, all of these matches look pretty good, but these ones seem to be outliers in these particular hospitals. Maybe mm -hmm. we request some more information nice. on that. Yeah. Or that you will use that, let's say, that volume to give even more confidence because of the similarity of the matches which are present yeah. uh, across the country. I mean, I could even see, like, if people, if, if certain... Um, health organizations and 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 medical is much better at um, sharing things openly than than some other markets. I mean, even if you had just a matching file on BioPortal, for instance, that would be gold. That would be so helpful, not just to other hospitals and medical institutions, but faculty and people that are doing research into these. I think that's also very helpful for them. Yeah, yeah. And this actually, I, I don't know if we got into this discussion earlier, but so this is. It's primarily a matching technology in the first instance. So when somebody clicks on a link and they get that square box that Raphael showed, mm -hmm. we'll be able to put buttons in that as well. So we're thinking of people who maybe have 16,000 records mm -hmm. processed. And we, we did that initially in the, in the early stages of the uh, POC last year, uh, where a 16,000 record uh, file was matched to DMD in 16 minutes. So it's mm -hmm. tremendously fast, but someone mm -hmm. still has to go in mm -hmm. there and validate that. Yeah. But you, now you can say, okay, it's going to take them maybe 10, 20 seconds for record. Uh, probably more like 10 if they're quite experienced, 20 if less, or if the you know depending on the data quality. Mm -hmm. um, but once once these maps, and that, that's what we call, we move from matching to maps. Maps is yep. when they've been authorized by yep. a domain expert. Um, at that point, you never lose them. It doesn't yep. matter what change is on either side. And that's the beauty of linked data, right? Like there's this, exactly. this exactly. higher higher lift. By the way, that exactly. lift is no different than if you're doing a lift and shift or if you're doing a giant mapping project, except yep. using this kind of technology. And, you know, there's some, some knowledge graph technologies that I've talked about that kind of, you know, support some of this matching stuff as well. It, it, it's a living document, right? Yes. When you have linked data, it just keeps going. You know, one of the examples that you were showing here is, you know, it was almost the same, but just kind of slightly off. Yes. And that's where machines, while very smart, can get hung up a little bit. And that's why, even if you do a lot of this human in the loop, having some of those 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 notes in there will help refine the machine learning later down the line. So yes. it gets better and better and better as you go. But that doesn't mean that it will eventually be able to run all by itself. Exactly. Uh, I did want to ask, though, like just uh, to make sure this does scale a little bit more. Is there any way like if there is a hundred percent, I mean, hundred percent confidence is near impossible. But is there any way to set like a confidence level to say like anything above this threshold is just automatically approved? You, you can yeah, it that, can be done, but it viable. might introduce error to, to the system as well. Sure. Sure. No. So it's you, better to be safe. It's better to yeah. play safe and leave the human, the the expert, domain expert, to verify and and approve. I only it. say this because while I I I stand by what I said earlier, when you're dealing with medical, you have to have the highest confidence. Yeah. Sometimes people just maybe their use case isn't as critical for yes. for for someone's health. Maybe it's something that can just do some pre-processing. Sometimes you just don't have the staff to do manual review of everything. So that's the only reason I ask is just to make sure the audience knows if their use case allows some of that flexibility that it would, might be there. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that the, the, the way you would see it is if it's clinical, you have mm -hmm. to invest the time. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the thing mm -hmm. is you only have to invest the time really the most the of this investment is upfront yep. and yep. can be budgeted in because you know yep. roughly how long it's going to take you to clear yep. that backlog. Yep. Once the backlogs are cleared, you're looking at really a small number of records every week right. uh, to be maintained. But if mm -hmm. you stop doing it, then you can you can begin to have a problem there. Right. So that's right. Why you, you, should, it, it, you know, it's the best practice in IT to always automate and move yep. on. But right. In response to your other point, if it's non-clinical, if it's market data, then mm -hmm. yeah. And if you, you, you've got a small team, you have a deadline and 
yep. you know, you can deal with a little bit of um, a, a small amount of, let's say, uncertainty in that. But right. yeah, you could take you could you could do this for a batch and you would just take the lot in and work yep. with that. Yes, yes. But I mean, for this, we, we took we came to this actually by accident. We were doing trials uh, with another technology for with a firm and they told us about this issue. Yeah. And they said, well, actually, none of the hospitals know what to do with this because they're now been, they've been told to just publish, you know, or, or to yep. put on the prescription one uh, yep. uh, drug name and that's it. And they have a lot to 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 manage. So they they told us about this issue. We looked at the regulation. We spoke directly to the NHS as well. We showed them a PLC, and the mm -hmm. feedback has been great. And we, when we, you know, showed the um, uh, this version, which has only been finalised in the last few weeks, to mm -hmm. the first hospital, we could sense the enthusiasm. You know. Yeah.